Welcome into our third video for Calculus 3. The last video we talked about vector addition as well as introducing vectors and scalar multiplications. Today we're going to talk about the dot product. And the way I want us to think about the dot product is we're going to think about it as multiplication between two vectors. So we'll just say multiplication. So imagine we take these two vectors and we multiply them together, we have an output. Now for this type of multiplication, our output is going to be a scalar, right? So an actual number. So again, now imagine we took two vectors, let's call them A and B, and we're gonna dot them together. What I'm saying is we will get some scalar we'll call this C, that is living inside the real numbers, right? So some number that is a real number, that's what we'll get. Which is kind of interesting, right? We're taking two vectors, and instead of getting a vector out, we're gonna get a scalar, right? So well, what does this actual multiplication look like? How do we perform the operation? And so let's make these arbitrary vectors A, and we'll say this is composed of a three-dimensional vector, little a1, little a2, little a3, and we'll do the same thing with B. So let's say B is going to be equal to little b1, b2, and b3. Now let's do the dot product up here. So let's actually define the operation. So we'll say A dot B is equal to, and we're just gonna write out the vector form so we can actually see what's going on here. A1, A2, A3, and we're gonna dot it with B, B1, B2, B3. And now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the components here. So we'll take the first components, A1 and B1, and we're going to multiply them together Let's use a different color here. And then we're going to add the next components. So A2, B2, plus A3, B3. Now I know we've defined this in three, a three-dimensional vector, but this will work for n dimensions, meaning if I had a fourth dimension, right, we could add plus A4, B4, or if I just have two dimensions, right, I could get rid of this, I have A1, B1, plus A2, B2. Right, so it does work for n dimensions. Okay, let's actually do an actual example here. So let's define A as a three-dimensional vector. We'll say negative two, positive three, positive five. And we'll say B is going to be equal to, let's do negative four, positive two, negative three. Okay. Now I've lined these up specifically to make our calculation easier, right? So if we're doing a dot b, it equals negative two times negative four, we'll write it all out first, plus three times two, plus five times negative three. And now we just need to simplify. We have positive eight, positive six, and a minus 15. And so after all of that, eight plus six, 14, minus 15, we get a nice negative one. Awesome. So this is as far as the calculation will take us for now. Now maybe some of us are looking at this negative one going, well, what does that mean? What's the interpretation behind the actual dot product itself? Which is a great question. We haven't gotten to it yet, right? Once we get to some applications, we'll discuss what this negative one is actually telling us. But for right now, we just wanna go through the right calculation. So A times B, we've defined it in three dimensions. But again, if it was two dimensions, right? Get rid of the A3 and the B3 right, all that would happen is we'd get rid of this last part. If it's four dimensions, right, we just continue the same pattern. Going through our calculation, right, not too bad. All we're doing is multiplying some numbers and adding them together. 
right? So hopefully, right, everything makes sense. Uh, if you do have questions, again, comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them. I will see you in the next part of the video where we will get into applying the dot products in terms of calculating the angles between two vectors. So I will see you then. Welcome on back. Let's go ahead. And I'm going to put up there in the left hand corner for a second just a reminder of the dot product so we see it. Now what I want to add here is we're going to find the angle. So find angle between vectors. Right? This is what I mentioned at the end. This is our goal right now. Now using the dot product, which we should see over there, what do we have? Well, we have another formula, I'll put it right below, that is going to be, let's say, the dot product, so we'll say a dot b, right, is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, let's make these vectors, times cosine of theta, right, so I'll leave that there for a second. Now something to mention here is before when we were talking about dot product, right, I said it works for n dimensions, which is true. It does, right? However, right, when we're thinking about the angles between vectors, right, kind of stops at three dimensions. Okay, so what are we interested in? If I give you two vectors, what can you give me? Well, you can give me the dot product right, you can give me the magnitudes and maybe we'll write these out. So let's come up with just two vectors, right, if I gave you A and I said let's have this be 3, negative 2, 5, and let's take B and let's say this is going to be 4, 3, negative 2, Right, what can you give me? Well, you can give me the magnitude of each one of these, right, the length of each one of these vectors. You can also give me the dot product. So let's do that first. So let's go ahead and we'll solve a dot b. And this is going to be equal to, I've written them perfectly aligned, 3 times 4, 12, negative 2 times 3, minus 6, minus 10. So we are left with negative 16 and a positive 12, negative 4, right? So hopefully we're getting better at calculating that dot product. I have that. Let's go ahead and we'll find the magnitude, right? We haven't done that in a second. So let's calculate the magnitude of A. And again, this is going to be the square root of each component squared, right? So the square root of... 3 squared, 9, negative 2 squared, 4, and positive 5 squared, 25. What does this give us? The ugly square root of 38, which is a co-prime, so nothing for us to do with it. Let's just leave it as is. And we will also do the magnitude of B. And so let's see if I can scoot down here. Magnitude of B is equal to the square root of 4 squared, 16, 3 squared, 9, and negative 2 squared, 4. So we have the ugly square root of 29. So I didn't pick great numbers for us, but we'll still get the, the point here. Right, so think about what I've done. I have a dot b, I have the magnitudes. What don't I have? Well, I don't have cosine of theta, right? This is what I want to solve for, the angle between the vectors. So let's go ahead and we're going to move cosine of theta, right? We're going to do some algebra in which we're going to keep cosine of theta on this side. We'll move the magnitudes to the other side, which means cosine of theta is equal to a dot b over the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, right? And now we have all of our information to at least, right, calculate cosine of theta. Now this is going to be an ugly calculation, so we are going to need a calculator. 
right? But I will leave that for you guys to complete. But at least we can write cosine of theta. Maybe I'll put the answer down here. I'll have to use a calculator, but I'll put the answer down here. Cosine of theta is equal to a dot b, negative 4, divided by the square root of 38, which is a co-prime, 2 times 19, and the square root of 29. Now, there's nothing for us to do. Unfortunately, nothing else right, breaks down, so we have to leave it as is. Again, I'll show the calculation in this aspect, right, just so you understand what's going on. Right, in order to actually solve for theta, I would have to use a calculator for this. Theta is going to be equal to cosine inverse right, of this ugly thing here, negative 4 root 38 root 29. Now, it is useful to know that cosine inverse maps where? Well, it maps to either quadrants 1 or quadrants 2, and I'll show that maybe somewhere else as well. But as far as actually calculating, look for the calculator below. It should help us with the answer. Okay, other than this, that is all I got for finding the angle between two vectors. Uh, we are going to talk about one more thing dealing with angles as far as what does it mean for angles to be orthogonal. So there'll be a short video on that, but I will see you guys in the next part of the video. Thanks everyone. All right, now that we have a way to measure angles, right, between two vectors, let's go ahead and write out what we have, we know that a dot b is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of theta, right? And we can rearrange this if we want to. Actually, let's go ahead and do that just so we have it. Cosine of theta is equal to a dot b all over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Okay, and we'll leave that there. Now the concept that I want to introduce is what's known as projections. And I'll do a drawing on the side over there. Put a little swivel there. Projections. And I'll have some sort of graphic pop up here, but I'll actually do the drawing so we get, a, a, get an idea as I draw it here. So let's go ahead, we're gonna draw just a two-dimensional uh, grid However, this idea does extend into three dimensions. So when we do our example problem, right, we will do a calculation in three dimensions. So imagine I have two vectors. Let's go ahead and draw them. We'll just call them A and B. All right, so we'll say we have B, and let's say we have A. Okay, now projection, now what I want us to think about is imagine, right, some sunlight is coming from this way. If I projected this vector onto vector A, right, what would it look like? Right, so pretend there's a light source maybe coming from this direction, right, and the vector's getting projected down. So what ends up happening is it looks like a shadow. We're gonna end up drawing a straight line. So this creates a 90 degree angle here. Right, so what we're interested in, right, is really this vector here, right, from here to here. This is the projection, what's known as the projection of B onto A, right? This is the projection of B onto A. That's what we're going to try to solve for here, okay? Now, what I first need to do, right, is figure out what is the length, right, of this particular vector? Once I get the length of the vector, I already know the direction that it's headed in because it's the same direction as A, right? So we'll get to that part in a second. But the very first part that we want to look for is known as, it's written as the component, and we have a small a here, so of, of B onto A. And this is also known as the scalar projection, right? So we want to know the length of this vector, right? So what I have in brackets there on the side, I want to know the length of this. 
And so I'm just going to write this here. All right, so we can, I'm going to denote it with an R just to shorthand notation it. So I'm going to put R, which is just the length, right? I'm just going to say R, I didn't need to write it over here, I guess, is the component part. So just the length, not the direction. I could have wrote it over there. All right, so again, just the length of this. So let's think about how we can find the length of this side. Well, what do I have here? It's a triangle, right? I have a triangle. And I also have, so I'm looking for this particular side, but I also have the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle, right? Because that's B, the vector B, right? So let's write this out over here. Uh, the magnitude of B, right, is going to be R, right, hypotenuse of this triangle. I'm going to probably misspell that, just go with it. Right, the hypotenuse of this triangle. So let's think of some trig properties that we have. Well, what do I have? I have an angle, right? And I also have the adjacent side, that's what I'm curious of, and I need the magnitude of B, right? So what do we have? We have SOKOTOA. So I know that cosine, let's put a theta here. I know that cosine of theta is going to be equal to adjacent, which is, I'm just going to use R, but this is the length of this particular vector. I'm just going to use R over, right, hypotenuse, which is just going to be the magnitude of B. Now, if I want to solve for R by itself, right, I can just be, bring B to the other side. Right, so now I have that B cosine theta is equal to R, right? Which is again, the component of B onto A or the scalar projection. So it's just the length, not necessarily the direction of the vector, just the length, it's a scalar, right? But what do I have here? So I have this, right? B cosine of theta is equal to R. Do I have a method of finding this? Well, I don't necessarily know the angle, right? But what do I know over here, right? So let's bring all this together now. What can, how can I get a B cosine of theta, right? Well, what do I have here, right? I have a, I'm sorry, this is a magnitude before I forget. How do I get a magnitude of B times cosine of theta? Well, look at what we have here. What happens if I move this over here, right? And I'll write this here. So now I have that B cosine theta is equal to a dot b all over the magnitude of a. Okay, so instead of writing r here, I know that the length of this particular vector that I'm interested in, the projection is going to have the length of a dot b over a. Okay, so that take that's going to take care of Right, that's gonna take care of calculating the scalar projection, right? So let's go ahead and write that down. Over A, awesome. Okay, now the only part that we need to add here is it needs to be moving in the right direction. So I have the length of the vector but I need to be moving in the right direction, right? Well, I wanna move in the same direction as A, so all I need to do is multiply this by A, right? The vector A, but I need to be careful. There's one other thing I need to do. So let's write out the full equation. So it goes as such, the projection of B onto A is equal to, right, the scaled, right, the distance, so we need this scalar, the actual length of the vector. So we'll put this here. Over the magnitude of A. So that's the first part. And I need to be moving in the direction of A. However, right, what happens if I just multiply by the vector A? Well, the vector A has a length 
larger than one. So now I'm multiplying by another scalar. So in order to offset that, right, I need to make sure that this is a unit vector. Okay, and so finally we'll put together the equation. Maybe I'll have to do the example uh, on the next slide here so I can erase. But our final equation goes the projection, right, of B onto A is going to be equal to, let's just put everything together now. So we have A dot B. And this is the magnitude times the magnitude, right? So we'll just write the magnitude squared. Times, right, the actual vector. So this whole thing here is just a scalar, right? And we're multiplying it by the vector A. Okay, so that is our equation. Do we have enough space to squeeze in our example? Probably not, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this part here. I'll end up erasing all of this. We'll do our example here so at least we still have a visual and we will go from there. Sound good? All right, see you shortly. All right, welcome back. I lied, I uh, ended up erasing the whole board but I will give us a reminder. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll do our same drawing over here. I have this two-dimensional, right, XY Cartesian plane. I draw one vector here, let's call this one B, and I'll call this one A. We'll do lowercase a. And again, I wanna project B onto A. Right, so I need two different parts, and right? I'm looking for this specific vector here. I need two different parts. The first part I need is what's known as the component right, or the scalar projection, denoted as this, component of B onto A. And it's equal to A dot B over the magnitude of A. Right, so that's how we calculate this scalar projection, the actual distance. And so let's do that part first. I'm gonna give us two vectors here. We'll call this, or A is gonna be one, one, two, and we'll say B is gonna be negative two, three, and one. So again, we're just calculating the length of the vector first, and so I've lined them all up, so we'll go ahead and do A dot B, and let's see what we get. We have one times negative two, plus, three times one plus two times one. So easy enough, the twos cancel out and I'm left with just three, All right? So that is our first part, All right? We have the a dot b, which is the numerator. Now let's calculate the magnitude of a. Magnitude of a is just going to be the square root of one squared plus one squared, so one plus one, uh, plus two squared, so four. And we end up with the square root of six. All right, so what does this end up equaling? We have this is equal to three over root six, right? So this is the scalar projection, right? The length of this vector. Now, in order to get it to move in the same direction as A, all we have to do is take our right, scalar projection and multiply it by the vector. But there's one more piece we need, right? So the equation goes the projection of B onto A is gonna be equal to, and it's this piece here, I'm just gonna copy it one more time. I have to write it down here because I wrote that a little bit too high. divided by the magnitude of A times the unit vector A, because we don't want to multiply it by another scalar, so I need to make sure that A here has a length of one by making it a unit vector. Okay, so we already have all of the work here, 
we just need to add on one more piece. And so what happens? Well, we have a dot b over a, that's right here. We also already have, right, the magnitude of a, again, times the vector a, which is one, one, two. Put like a line there. And so this ends up being, right, three over, over six, which is gonna be one half times the vector one, one, two. And again, this simplifies to one half, right? So we end up getting the vector one half, one half, and one. And that's it. All right, so that would be this vector right here. One half, one half, one would be this vector. Right, and this is right here, right? This is the projection of B onto A. Sound good? So a quick example. Again, feel free to ask questions. I do have one more example coming up. We're going to take this same idea and apply it to work, a work application. So I will see you in the next example. Okay, welcome back for our last example here. And we're gonna go over an example of work. Now, we're gonna be utilizing the same thing we just learned in the previous example, which was projection, right? Or at least we'll be utilizing part of that as well as a part of another equation we learned a couple parts back. Now, for work, this is coming back from Calc 2, I believe in section 6.4 of the book that we're using. We said that work is equal to force times displacement. Now this is true, however, this is making the assumption that the force is moving in the same way as the displacement, meaning, let's say we have a poorly drawn box, and we're moving it to the left, and we're pulling it, right? So imagine we're pulling it in the same direction that we're moving it. And so the difference here, right, we're moving it this way, the difference here would be, let's generalize this out now, where what if we're pulling it like a normal person, not directly straight across, and maybe we have a hand on it, right? And we're pulling this way, but we're moving the box that way, right? So we have two different vectors, right? In other words, so let's draw this out. In other words, we have a force vector that's moving in this direction, and we'll call this, right, we'll say P, uh, P, and this is gonna be R. I'm gonna copy because there's gonna be an example that pops up, so I'll use the same notation. And this is our force vector. And we also have a displacement vector. We'll use a capital D here, we'll call this Q. All right, so again, we're moving this object that way, but we're pulling it slightly upwards. And of course, we have an angle between the two. And so the idea is here, right, if we're looking for the force component in the direction of the displacement, we end up obtaining F, mag the magnitude of F times cosine of theta. And if we want to know the, if we want to, right, get the actual distance, we're just gonna times it by the actual magnitude of the displacement, right? So this is telling us the force component and the direction of the displacement where we actually need to multiply the displacement magnitude to get the distance that it's traveled, right? So we have something that looks like this. Now rearranging this, right, what do we get? Well, let's just put, right, this is equal to, we're just putting the magnitudes at the front just because it looks a little bit nicer and it should look a little bit more recognizable. Okay, and now what does this equal? So remember at the very beginning of the video, right, we talked about introducing an angle between vectors, and we said a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine of the angle between them. Right, and now that should look familiar, right? All we're doing is substituting capital F and capital D for the A and B, 
So we know this is also equal to the magnitude of F dot the magnitude of D. Or not the magnitude, just the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. Sorry, no magnitude. Okay. So again, we should have an example that pops up there in the corner. Hopefully the actual question comes down here. Imagine we're pulling a wagon, right? So same idea, imagine this box though is a wagon or that wagon is a wagon and we're pulling the wagon and we have some information. We're going to say our force vector, right? Has a magnitude. So let's draw a line here. So we'll write our force vector has a magnitude of 70 newtons. We'll just put newtons and we'll say the displacement vector, we want to drag this wagon 100 meters. Right, and this is all in the question given to you. And the very last thing that we can see here is the angle, so we'll write it over here, or theta, right, is equal to 35. Right, so now we see, okay, this is the information I have. I have the magnitudes, I have the angle between, which is 35 degrees, and I go, well, which piece do I want the left or the right side? Well, in this case, I have the magnitudes, I have the angle, right? If I wanted to use the dot product, I would actually need the two vectors themselves. So in this case, we're just gonna use, right, this format here. We'll draw a little bit of a line, and we will produce, let's see, uh, we have 70, right, this, uh, the magnitude of the force vector times the magnitude of the displacement times cosine of 35. And now if you have a calculator, that's awesome. If you don't, I'm gonna give you the answer. It ends up being 5,734 Newton's meter. Or we'll just say joules. Awesome. Make sure I copied that down right, yeah. Right, so again, we started with our basic equation of work from way back when. Now we're introducing the topic of, hey, maybe we're not pulling the force in the same direction as the object is moving, right? There's a slight angle to it, right? So we have these two vectors. We have our force vector, we have our displacement vector, right? So the first thing we calculate is the force, right, component in the direction of displacement, which is the magnitude of cosine theta, times the actual magnitude of the displacement itself, right? Putting that all together, if I give you some information, in this case, the magnitudes and an angle, right, we can go ahead and calculate work. Okay, hopefully this example helped. Again, if you have any questions, come to class with questions. If you're on YouTube, leave comments below. Let me know if there's anything you would like to see more. Thanks, guys.